What's happening guys, Keith here, and welcome to my review of the October 11th edition of Impact. So it's been a while since I've done a review directly after Impact, however, I have my preview and predictions video for Bound for Glory tomorrow, Saturday I have another edition of the Impact Report, Sunday we have Bound for Glory, which I will be attending, and Monday I will have my Bound for Glory review. So let's talk about the go-home show for Bound for Glory. Kind of a mixed bag here. Um, I don't know, there was some crap, some good stuff. I guess we'll just talk about it throughout the show. So we open the show with a fatal four-way between Trevor Lee, Petey Williams, Puma King, and Jack Evans. This happened from last week with uh, Scarlet Bordeaux's encounters with all four men trying to, uh, I guess, become her next project, so to speak. Uh, but it was a good match to open the show. Uh, Puma was obviously the crowd favorite. Trevor Lee attempted at one point to get a USA chant going. That really went over well. And then he started howling at the audience. He was getting some good heel heat. Uh, but like I said, it was a good match. Good flow to it. The majority of the match was one-on-one, -on -one, though. Um, there were times where it was all four men competing. Um, I did like what I saw from Puma King and uh, Jack Evans. He's no stranger. I really think he would be a good fit for the X Division. I mean, there's so many good opponents right now in Impact that they would put on such good matches, and I think that's really the way they should be going with things. I mean, we saw Desmond Xavier, Zachary Wentz, guys like that. I think they would put on such good matches. Uh, but hopefully, he's a, a possible signing in the future. Um, I really enjoyed the finishing sequence for this match. Uh, Evans hit a... 630 off the top rope onto Puma King. Trevor Lee hit a double stomp on Jack Evans. And then Petey Williams put away Trevor Lee with the Canadian Destroyer. One thing I do not like, and they made mention of it during the match where Don and Josh were talking about Trevor Lee and how he never wins matches. Well, here was another example, and he was the one to take the pin. Not a huge fan of that. I really think they have so much potential with Trevor Lee. I mean, everything he does outside of Impact is fantastic. Uh, very underrated talent they have there. I really wish they would do more with him, but hopefully we will see something from him in the future. I mean, I still expected them to do something between him and Caleb Conley, at least having something, you know, come from the cult of Lee, as Caleb wasn't even seen on these tapings, on TV at least. Uh, he might have been on Explosion, but... Like I said, hopefully they do something in the future with Trevor Lee. So, Petey Williams won this match. Is anything going to come of it? Or is it just a match that he won? Um, is he going to be pursued by Scarlett? We don't know. She wasn't on the show. Uh, then we go backstage, and Mackenzie is being interviewed by Rich Swan. She asks him if he has found his partner for Bound for Glory yet. He says he has, and he says this is somebody that will be on the same level as him. For a quick second, I thought, oh, Neville, the Neville level. I said, maybe there's something here. And then he said, play the footage. And we learned that Willie Mack is his partner for Bound for Glory. Um, I've actually seen Willie Mack wrestle twice. Uh, I forget the first match he was in. The second match was actually a triple threat with himself, Brian Cage, and Sammy Callahan. So he is going to make a great partner for Rich Swan. I'm glad to see him making his way to Impact Wrestling. I think he will be a great addition to the roster. Looking forward to that match on Sunday. And up next, we have Grado versus Maximo. When Grado was making his entrance, Don says, Oh, I guess someone left the gate at the institution unlocked. Uh, so, uh, apparently, well, Don said it anyway, that Maximo is the Mexican Grado. I'm not gonna lie, the interaction between the two of them did get a laugh out of me. However, this was an unnecessary match. This did nothing for anybody. Um, basically the highlight of this was Don running down Grado throughout the whole thing. Uh, Maximo did hit a nice suicide dive onto Grado on the outside, uh, but Maximo ended up kissing Grado and then rolling him up for the victory. After the match, Grado shook Maximo's hand, then kissed him himself. That was that. So, like I said, there was definitely some crap on the show. Uh, then we have Johnny, Eddie, and Falaba backstage. They each cut a promo hyping their match tonight, which I thought was going to be the main event. However, it was not. It was kind of stuck in the middle of the show, but I'm glad it wasn't because the main event did a better job building something for Bound for Glory. 
Uh, then we have the GWN flashback, and this was uh, from Bound for Glory 2010 and Knockouts Four Corner match. I must say, Impact has been cutting the time shorter on these. However, I mean, it's just completely useless to really have because, like, we saw at the end of the match that they showed on the flashback where it's like, well, there's no context here. Why was she looking confused? You know, just things like that. So I really think they just need to get rid of it all together. Then we have Mackenzie interviewing Eli Drake. They argue semantics about the what happened last week with himself and LaParka. Um, Eli said that LaParka got disqualified for using the chair, while Mackenzie said, you were the one that brought the chair into the match. Um, so we learned Eli Drake will indeed have a open challenge at Bound for Glory Sunday. Very, very exciting news. I am so glad that he is actually going to be on the card and he says it is only open for people from New York. So that makes things a little interesting, as one Chris Jericho is from New York. However, I do not expect it to be him. Possibly Tommy Dreamer, someone to that nature, maybe even the Brooklyn Brawler. Uh, but I'm going to talk more about that probably on my predictions video. I do have another person that is from New York, which I will get to later on. Uh, then we have the Desi Hit Squad match with Rohit uh, versus Gersinder. Apparently, the loser goes back to India. I mean, this this happened. Really, really no reaction from the crowd. I mean, Rohit got a little bit of a, I guess, a face reaction at some point. Uh, at one point toward the end of the match, Rohit was selling a shoulder injury. Gersinder kind of pulls back. The referee attends to Rohit. Gersinder goes to talk to Gama Singh. Gama starts yelling at him to, you know, focus back on Rohit. Gersinder goes back over to Rohit. He hits him with a high knee. Rohit, that is. And then Rohit push it, puts him away. Um, and then after the match, Gama slaps Rohit, walks with him to the back, leaving Gersinder in the middle of the ring. That was that. We still have other members of the Desi Hit Squad to debut, unless they... Uh, Decide to forego the whole thing? We'll see. Not a big deal. And then here's where the... I guess this was right after 9 o'clock, where that six-man tag with Johnny Impact, Eddie Edwards, Falaba versus Austin Aries, Moose, and Killer Cross took place. This was a good match. I mean, they gave it a whole bunch of time. Everybody kind of got their, their shit in, so to speak, as Brian Cage would say. Um, but nothing too crazy here. Didn't really do anything for any... One in particular besides the outcome of the match. But I really didn't care for the fact that Cross and Falaba were kind of thrown into the match. Um, it was good to see Falaba back on TV. However, Cross really not having anything to do at Bound for Glory is kind of a shame. I feel like he's kind of fallen into, the, I don't know, just a lackey at this point. I mean, he came in, he made a really good debut. Then he aligned himself with Austin Aries. We thought it was going somewhere. Then Moose aligned himself with them, and he kind of got to the back of the line. I mean, I just really hope they do something with him post Bound for Glory, as he's really just a henchman right now. So this is what I was talking about a little earlier on. Killer Cross is indeed from New York. Maybe he answers Eli Drake's challenge. I mean, granted, they're both technically heels, so... It was just somebody else from New York, and this, this would give Killer Cross something to do, uh, since he really should be on the card. But finish saw... Austin Aries beat Johnny Impact with a Brain Buster. Don't know why they had them finish out the match. I feel like somebody pinning Fala Ba would have been the correct outcome, but Aries standing tall is never a good thing for him on the show right before the pay-per-view. So we will see. So we go backstage. This was probably my favorite segment of the night. Uh, we see Father James Mitchell. He's playing an organ. Allie appears. Mitchell asks if the darkness has consumed her yet. She asks to go back to the undead realm. And Mitchell says, you can't have your soul back. Allie says she knows the deal she made. She says she needs to go back to the undead realm to help Kiera and bring her back. Mitchell tells her to meet him Sunday night. He will have the coffin open. They shake. Uh, so this kind of gives us some backstory um, on what happened way back when, when we kind of saw uh, Allie kind of go to the dark side a little bit now i don't know if this is going to be a match or if this is just a segment um but i'm interested uh, i i like where this is going i personally would like to see 
Allie save Kiera. Kiera turn on Allie, align herself with Sue Young. Give us something before Rosemary comes back because we still don't know when she is coming back. And uh, I think this would continue things at least until she comes back. So we will see. I, I like where they're going with this. And like I said, it gave us some backstory on things. And it's nice to see James Mitchell again. I always really enjoyed him as a character. Uh, then we had the Tessa Blanchard versus Kira match. Um, I feel like much like uh, Tessa's match with Fabi Apache a couple weeks back, this wasn't given an adequate amount of time. I feel like they kind of rush things like uh, Kira, Kira, I don't really know how to pronounce her name because it seemed like the announcer had a different pronunciation than uh, Josh and Don, but uh, she had some really good offense at the beginning of the match. They went to the outside, Tessa got her, threw her into the turnbuckle, it went back inside, had a little back and forth, and then Tessa put her away with a hammerlock DDT. Uh, it does suck that the whole feud with Taya and Tessa has been... Very lackluster, especially since Ty was unable to make the tapings. Um, but I really don't think this feud is going to be over with. Uh, I'll talk more about that on my predictions video. But I guess this was just something for Tessa to do while Taya wasn't there. And, I mean, they made it work. We got two decent matches between Tessa and two Mexico or Mexican talents. Um, but... As far as the feud for Bound for Glory, it really didn't do much. I mean, really, this whole show, if this was your first show watching, it wasn't really that great, and it really didn't help build toward Bound for Glory for a lot of things. I mean, most of the things were pretty much done and cemented, but it really didn't hype anything anymore. The uh, main event, though, this spot did. I really liked what they did here. We had the LAX and OG's Summit. King was hyping the hell out of their Bound for Glory match. He even looked at the camera and told everybody to order it. Uh, him and Conan have a back and forth. Conan kind of tells him that the bosses have a message for him. And he says that the ceasefire is over. It ends now. And then all six men fight. And that's how we end the show. Um, they really did a proper job here. This was really the only well done segment for the show. For building for Bound for Glory. Since that's really what the go home show is for. Uh, they did give backstory for people that are just first, you know, if they were just checking it out for the first time. We did get, you know, a very heated confrontation. It definitely built for the match, something you should be excited for on Sunday. Uh, we didn't see Sammy Callahan, OVE, or, I'm, or OVE. They really shouldn't be separate. OVE, we didn't see the Lucha Brothers. We didn't see Brian Cage. Um, yeah, it just felt like the show was kind of lacking a little bit um, outside of a couple things. Uh, just some things that really, really were unnecessary. And yeah, I am still looking forward to Bound for Glory. The matches should be fantastic. We have, I think, six matches, seven matches, I guess, with the Eli Open Challenge. And then whatever they're doing with Ali and Sue Young, I don't know if this is going to turn into a match or not. If it does, great. If not, I'm interested in the segment between the two of them. But yeah, that's pretty much all I have for my review. Kind of short tonight, but again, not a whole lot going on during the show. So I will catch you guys back here tomorrow for my preview and predictions video, Saturday for the Impact Report, and Monday for my Bound for Glory review. Thanks for checking out my video, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.